Alpha Talk Pants. Today, we will be talking about co-antibodies. We would go over what co-antibody is, what antibodies are considered co-antibodies, what procedures you can use to detect co-antibodies, and how you can cross-match for the patient with a co-antibody. It will be interesting to know how many times do I say the word co-antibody in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. In general, we would think of co-antibody as clinically insignificant. However, there are times when they become clinically significant. We will discuss about that in a bit. But for now, what is a co-antibody? What is a co-antibody? A co-antibody is a red cell antibody with the optimal antigen antibody binding temperature below 37 degrees Celsius. Most common co-antibodies are considered to be clinically insignificant because the reaction happened below body temperature. The difference between clinically significant and clinically insignificant is that a clinically insignificant antibody does not cause hemolytic transfusion reactions or hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. Since it doesn't cause a problem for the patients, we categorize it as insignificant. The main immunoglobulin that our body makes for the clinically insignificant co-antibody is usually IgM. The molecular structure of IgM is big, and because of its size, it cannot cross placenta, which explains why they do not cause hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. The most common clinically insignificant co-antibodies are Lewis, Lutheran, M, N, and P. Now you may ask if there is a clinically significant co-antibody. The answer is yes. The one that you are familiar with, or at least I hope you are familiar with, is the naturally occurring antibody from anti-A and anti-B. The ABO blood groups has both IgG and IgM antibodies. A and B antibodies are capable of reacting at body temperatures as well as room temperature. Anti-A and anti-B can cause red blood cell to lyse, and the IgG antibodies of anti-A and anti-B can cross the placenta, attach themselves to the fetus red blood cells, and damage or lyse the fetus red blood cells. This is why we classify ABO antibody as clinically significant co-antibody capable of causing hemolytic transfusion reactions and hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. As if this is not confusing enough, that is a pseudo-coantibody. A pseudo-coantibody is when you have an antibody that acts like a co-antibody, but it is actually not an antibody. A pseudo-coantibody can be influenced by a patient health conditions. The two common infections that can cause this scenarios are mycoplasma pneumonia and mononucleus infections. Mycoplasma pneumonia infection is associated with anti big eye, while mononucleus infections is associated with anti little eye. Anti big eye and little eye are common cold antibodies. But the good news is it is clinically insignificant. The reason that it can happen is because the bacteria antigen is really similar to big I and little i antigen. Our body got confused. Luckily, these two antibodies are clinically insignificant and will go away when the infection subsides. If most co-antibodies are clinically insignificant, why do we have to study them? Well, because they do show up on antibody screen. And when that happens, we need to identify it. We need to know what caused the positive first before we can say something is clinically insignificant or clinically significant. In general, the laboratory performs antibody screens at room temperature. This condition favors co-antibodies, which means co-antibodies could interfere with another allo or autoclinically significant antibody. The presence of the co-antibody could mask 
the presence of the other more significant antibody and that could cause a transfusion reaction if when undetected before transfusion. When the antibody screen is positive, do we automatically assume that it is a co-antibody? My quick answer is no. There are several reasons for the antibody screen to become positive, so you cannot assume at this point. The antibody screen could become positive from co-antibody, autoantibodies, or interference from patient medication. Medication interference. Cancer patient could get a false positive antibody screen because of the medications they are on. Medication like daratumumab is known to cause pan-reactive in solid phase, gel, and tube. So we have to proceed with cautions when the patient is on this medication. However, there are indications that you can tell by looking at the test results. Sometimes the co-antibody would show in the reverse of the blood type. When this happened, there would be a discrepancy in ABO blood type. You would see an unexpected reverse reaction. Of course, you cannot see this in a patient with a group O blood type. And it doesn't help that group O is the most common blood type. If you use a pre-warm technique and the unexpected reverse reactions go away, then that is your indication that the antibody screen could be from cold antibody. However, do not limit yourself because you could have cold and other antibodies at the same time. Or it could be a clinically significant cold antibody. This is where the experience come in. In some cases, you would want to follow up with antibody workup and sometimes the workup is not necessary. If you need to review on how to rule in or rule out, I have a video about it and I'll leave the link to it in the description box down below. The pre-warm technique is your best friend when it comes to dealing with co-antibody. I have a video about it also, please check it out after this video. But what if you don't want to eliminate the reactions? What can you do to prove your co-antibody theory? You could enhance the reactions instead of eliminating it. You can enhance the reactions by incubating your tubes in the refrigerator at 4 degrees for 15 minutes, spinning it down and read the reaction again. The reaction should be stronger. However, if the initial reactions already set 4 plus before cold incubations, then the cold incubations won't help. Do you have to identify cold antibodies? This is a hard question to answer just yes or no. If the co antibody only shows up in the reverse ABO blood type, then it is not necessary to identify specific what co antibody it is. However, if the antibody screen is positive, then you will have to identify the antibody that caused the positive reactions, whether it is co, warm, auto, allo, or any combinations in between. Even though you do not identify the core antibody, you will make a note in the patient file that this patient has a nonspecific core antibody. This note will do two things for you. One, it will help you when you do cross match. Two, it will let you know that this patient has an antibody for future reference. Once the patient has an antibody, it becomes part of the patient health records and it stay with the patients for life. What blood groups or antigens are considered cold antibodies? P1, Lewis, Luterin, M, and N. Or you can just remember it as I penguin one love M and N. Do you like that? Again, I penguin one love M and N. Who doesn't love M and M, right? How to cross match patient with cold antibody? Follow your facility protocol, but I will let you know what I would do. One, if you have an insignificant cold antibody, you can perform a full cross match using patient plasma and random compatible donor RBC. 
you may use the piwam technique when performing full cross man. Or two, for some core antibodies, you can just do an immediate spin cross match by pre-warming reactin. That's all I have for today on co-antibodies. If you want to know more about blood group antigens, comment down below. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.